Good evening, everyone. Not good afternoon, but good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. I am Stephen Corka. Juan Farage. And it's not just a, it's, it's an evening edition, so it's like Atomic Pop After Dark. You remember that? Boom. Oh, was that Cinemax? Boom, boom. What, After Dark? The after Dark, that was Cinemax, I right? think it was Cinemax yeah, that's After funny. Dark. I loved Cinemax After Dark when I was a yeah. kid. It was like, it was like where you get your softcore porn. Yeah. And... And it was great. HBO had some stuff. Oh, the Warriors beat the Rockets. Dude, I don't care. Do you remember that? Do you remember? Uh, uh, do you remember that? So Dream On that was on HBO. Yeah, that was with uh, Shanlene, right? I don't know what his name. Was. No, not Gary Shanlene. That was that no. Larry Sanders. Oh, Larry, Larry Sanders. The, the guy, the single guy, and he got a different girlfriend every. No. Every it was great. It was really great. But yes, we're at Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man Little Boy, After Dark. Boom, chicka, boom, boom. Featuring Stephen Gorka and. Juan Farage. <laughs> yeah. So, we're here to talk about Netflix's Lost in Space. Wanski didn't finish the last two episodes yet because he's waiting for his son because your son's apparently really into the show. He's a super huge fan. Super. So, I guess Netflix is achieving what it needs to if it's capturing the hearts and minds of children. Yeah, my son's 11. Yes. Um, uh, I finished it, so I just spoiled the fuck out of it for Juan. We're about to spoil the fuck out of it for you guys, too. I, let's, I'm let i just going to say right off the bat, I did not like the show at all. I loved it. I didn't like the show at all. I, I never saw the show from the 60s, but mm-hmm. I kind of know what it's about. But I loved the movie that came out in the late 90s. Like, mm-hmm. I loved it. You know what I'm talking about? That movie, yeah. I thought it was great. And th- and this one was not that at all. Let me tell you what I hated, if I if I may. First sure. of all, I hated the the, the dad. Robinson. I hated that he was like a GI Marine Corps vet and that he wasn't like smart, you know? I, I, I liked the William Hurt version in the movie where he was like the, the Reed Richards, you know? Of Yeah, but that was, bef- that was before society decided that we got to put down men only. What do you mean? The, the whole men are pieces of shit thing. What are you talking about? Yeah, the, the whole thing. Men are pieces of shit now. That's not, that's not, that, that's yeah, it's a whole movement now. That's not, that's not the message that I got from the from from the. Character. No, but men can't be smart anymore. That's all I'm saying. No, that's not true. Stop. That's it's true. Anyway, that's that's ridiculous. It's true. So, so but in the movie version, name a smart man the, on a TV the, show. The whole Robinson family were geniuses. You know, the mom, the the sister, the, the mom, the two girls, right? And, the little boy was a and, clueless kid. No, I'm yeah. not talking. In, I'm not talking in, in the new show. Doctor Smith. In oh, in the movie. In the movie, you 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 had the little boy Will Robinson who was a genius that created time travel. You know, and then his dad was a genius too that invented you know the warp drive that had let them go. It, it was great. It was awesome. And instead, they made the dad in this more like the pilot in the movie like mm-hmm. like, like the like the the the, the brawn the muscle yeah you know, the marine the, the marine yeah and, yeah and you know nothing against that i mean it's great but you know it, it, the, the the fact that he was the least smartest person and i'm just i'm used to him being like i said the reed richards of the family and that's just i didn't get a fantastic four of smart family vibe here yeah but uh, I, mean. I understand that they want to update it you know like they have to do something different i liked i liked having that um because it, it brings a, a different level to the relationship he has with his wife, her being the genius and him being the brawn, yeah. him being used to leadership position, and, and it, it brings a different dynamic to their family. I, I thought they did a good job at addressing the family issues and, mm-hmm. and, and making it a little more realistic and dramatic. Yeah, they yeah. They were in a happy family. And, no, they were super know, dysfunctional. Super dysfunctional, you know, near divorce. Um, and, and Well, they were going to get divorced. They, I mean, I think they, he got the letter. They were on the path. Yeah. Uh, and the children just were totally disassociated with him. Um, Will Robinson, like a total scaredy cat. The whole I, I I was so sick of that. Like I was so sick of his skin. Well, they made him they made him a child. I, I guess, but I, I, you know, again, I'm thinking about the movie again. I liked I liked the curious Will Robinson. Well, I think this was more realistic. I think they were trying to do something a little more realistic. I maybe so. And 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 I think the the thing is maybe that's why it appeals to my son, because my son has a character he can identify with. So you're saying your son identifies with Will, Will Robinson? Oh, absolutely. See, I, I I mean any kid could understand those feelings, right? Of course you can, but he was a little too scared. Like didn't want to. Like he's the type of kid that like all the other kids are jumping off the 
off off the ledge to jump into the river, and he's like, "No, I'm not." Going. Well, those types of children exist. They do exist. My son. They 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 do exist. However, you know that's not the Will Robinson that I know. And Understood. That's but, really what it came down to. But I, I like the I like I like the family being updated. It's not more of the same. Like this Will Robinson wasn't even like he wasn't a super genius either. Like I I like. I like the movie version. My fault, you know. I like the guy that. But I, I felt he was more realistic. So like, there were points in the show, at least where I saw, where Will Robinson is the one that came up with the ideas. Like, uh, he understood it was um, magnesium, right? And yep. he said, well, "Dad, we can use that because it'll keep burning to try to get out our sister." That was him. So I like it because he's still he's innocent, and but you know that he's he has his moments, right? And what I like about him is um, he might not be as intelligent, but he has a lot more common sense, like understanding I'm going to die anyway, so I'm going to put the robot together. So he did a lot of things during the show that I feel a kid could do, and at the same time, he had his moments of brightness. He definitely, he definitely, as a character, was probably one of the more dynamic characters. Sure. You know, and, and he and he grew a lot from episode one. I mean, I also, and I'm sorry to interrupt. I also think it helps Will Robinson's relationship with Robot. Like the robot could have, would have never, no matter what happened in the situation where the robot's facing death when the fires around them. Yeah. Um, I think that Will Robinson's innocence is what got the robot to to accept him, basically, to no. become his protector. Like, it wouldn't have happened no, with was, a Marine. It wasn't that at all. It was the fact that Will saved the robot, and then the mm -hmm. robot sw sweared allegiance, because, as I spoiled to you, spoilers, Ag uh, Ag not Agent Smith. Dr. Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith went off and, and did the same thing later on, and then the robot sweared allegiance. But the thing is that the kid and the robot do have, like, some kind of mind meld, right? Yes. Right. Yes, there's a definite connection there, as as you see in the final episode. I, I think that event we'll, we'll see what happens, but eventually maybe, like, Will's, his innocence plays into that dynamic between him and the robot. The robot maybe is easier for the robot to see himself as a protector of Will. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I don't know. I, I, I like the kid, though. And I like the dad. I thought all the characters were really well the done. The characters were good. I'm just comparing it to what I knew. To, yeah, to what you know. And I loved what I knew. You know? I mean, so you spoke about the robot. Uh, what did you think of the robot? I thought the robot was amazing. Probably my favorite part of the show. The robot was amazing. An alien race of robot creatures um, that literally, practically unstoppable. You yeah, know? right. Especially against a human being. Yeah. Um, but again, I liked the other robots i liked i liked i liked the robot not only in the tv but, show but, but in the movie that that's isn't it isn't it unfair it, to it's the ai that's on the ship to protect the ship and it came with the ship from the beginning and it already has an allegiance born and i get it like they're creating a new relationship it's a new take on it i i appreciate that but uh but judging how about judging the show i, I don't like it that's a humanoid if, if you never saw the show this is the first exposure you had to Lost in Space. You love the show. Yes, yes. And but and that's and that's what it is. My son loves it, and and I I um I love I like the movie a lot, and the TV show I really couldn't get through. I thought it was yeah, it's cheesy. It's cheesy, and I, I'm not into it. Yeah. Um. So. I just saw it with the movie as just a completely different thing. I was able to separate the two. So I just watched this as like a fresh property that's completely new. Yeah. And I thought it was great. And I think the robot was the best part of that show. Just how they came up. It's not just like, you know what I mean? It's, it's different. What about Dr. Smith? Amazing. Super manipulative. Which is why it's perfect. Like um, you hated her, right? I hated her. I wanted her to get busted I every fucking her. second. I hated her so much. Yeah. But... Um, not better than Gary Oldman. Sorry. I mean, she's not going to be... A, well, Gary Oldman's a better actor. Like, yeah. <laughs> there, there's no comparison. Like, like right. he was an evil Dr. Smith. Right. You know, I just, she's, she's more manipulative. Yeah, super manipulative. I wanted to punch her in the face a gazillion times. Mm -hmm. like, uh, and, and Which is great because it gave us a, a, a good villain. Yes. Right. Um, she's locked up now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, of course, she'll come out again. Um, what? So we talked about the dad. What about the kids? So I, I liked Will. Like we talked about, I like Will Robinson. Um, out of the two girls, I don't remember their names. I don't. Judy is one. Okay, Judy, I like a lot. W w w was, was, was she the adopted black chick or the other one? Yeah. Okay. I, I believe her, so. I, I liked her too, but I didn't like how they spent three episodes doing flashbacks of her and her claustrophobic scene. Right. And right. then all of a sudden, like that, she's better. Right, right, yeah. I thought that, I, you know there was a lot of moments in the show, like every Netflix show, it seems, where they could have cut a an lot episode or two out. You know? On this one, it's true. Um, and uh, but I think it's true of all these Netflix shows, man. Um, so save some money, Netflix. Just do eight. Yeah, just do eight. eight. I think eight's been a perfect number. It's a nice sweet spot, you know. Like Defenders, 
was great. Great. I mean, and it was not that good. It was not that good, but the fact that it was eight episodes Thank and God. so all we got was action made God. it a lot better than Thank what God. it was, right? And not saying we just need action all the time, but you could say what you need to say in eight hours. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, so the other girl, though, the white one. What was her name? I don't know. Yes, I know you're talking about. Like, pointless. I don't, I don't know. And, and, her, I, and her love relationship so, with, with the president. Was, was which was so, like, out of nowhere. So here's yeah. here's my problem with that. Like, I'll, I'll say this about this Lost in Space. Like, the characters were all developed really well. Yes. Like, they, they used their, hour, their time on that show to really develop these characters. Except for some reason, that girl, they're like, you're randomly in love with this guy who drops a note. Yes. And that was just like when she walked with him to when they thought they were all going to die and she went to the waterfall with him and it was dried up and she had like a fucking like almost nervous breakdown. I was yeah. like, this is, all I was this, kill yeah, you. like this is so stupid. You're yeah. on an alien planet. Like yeah. it was, I, I hated her. I, I, not that I hated her. They just didn't really develop her like the other characters. Yes. So sadness. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, favorite part about the show. It was 100 percent the robot, the robot. and um, they nailed his his danger. Will Robinson, yes, like the voice. The first time I heard it was it's like very, amazing. It's very I am Groot because that's yeah. all he says. Really. Right, that's all he says. But like I like the, the and, and then he tells a story through his mask. But you know the voice, like the yes. how they made him sound robotic, but yes. like really really well done. So I love the robot. Yeah, I love uh, the robot. My favorite part was the planet. I love the fact that the planet was constantly evolving and then de-evolving and then no. evolving, and uh, because it was because of the, the gravitational pull to the sun, I thought mm-hmm. it reminded me of Star Trek Three: Search for Spock, right. the Genesis planet that burned mm-hmm. and then died. died right yeah, away. yeah, I I really enjoyed the planet. Uh, so show show leaves. You know what? You know, interestingly enough, you know what my favorite my son's favorite thing about the show is? What's that? The chicken. The chicken. How crazy is that? That's crazy. He got really attached to the chicken, yeah. and when he thought the chicken died, he was freaking out. I know. Yeah. yeah. I so, really like the smuggler. The smuggler was great. Whatever is. I'm I'm glad they threw him in there. He's really charismatic. Yeah, and I'm glad he stuck with the Robinson. Also, you bit. you know what's really great is that they actually made him a good guy. Yeah. yeah. Like, cause they could have gone another route. Yeah. But they actually made him like an honorable guy. Like yeah. from the beginning, you thought he was gonna be an asshole, cause you know. They, they get off with the ship, yeah. then he takes his partner's boots, but then saves the chicken, saves the other girl. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, like he, was, he was practical. He's like, the person's yeah. dead. I, we need these. Right, right. You know? So uh, I like that they made him practical and at the same time noble. Yeah. So he, he's, he's, he was great. So show leaves off with the Robinsons and Smith and the smuggler uh, going taking a wormhole to the alien solar system, it looks mm-hmm. like, as we saw the two suns. Colliding, which made the eight symbol, uh, which is the danger world Robinson that the robot was trying to convey. Uh, the other, the, all the other humans escaped back onto their. Yeah, they got rid ship. of them. They're like, we don't need you. Uh, wh- whatever their main ship was, I don't know, and they're going mm-hmm. to their their Earth two, so say. So they think the Robinsons are done. So if they do a season two, which I'm sure they will, um, the uh, the Robinsons are going to be in the alien home world home solar, solar system. system i hope they don't so here's what i they, hope they know that smith is bad smith right is locked up smith is got, of course going to come out again but and, and and here's what i hope the show doesn't turn into I, I i hope it doesn't become like an action-packed thing like them trying to against the robots or i i, I hope that it just the first season was great because there was like a lot of but it was like I don't know. It was like very Fantastic Four. Well, t- towards the end of the first season, you know, the robot encountered another robot, mm-hmm. and they fought each other. And that's well, I, I don't, I don't want to see that. I want to see the exploration. At, well, here's the deal, though. Like they're in the robot solar system. If they encounter other robots and the robots come after them, they're gonna get their ass kicked. Yeah, there's no match. That one robot can't right. defend it. So right, they, right. they gotta do. So. And if they and if they make it look like they defend it, I call bullshit. Keep in mind too, the Jupiter Two has like no fuel left on it. It's like right. literally on life support. They have there are, there are food shortages. Like it it it, it becomes the situation is dire. Right. You know, but but they could totally take a Star Trek exploration, you know, approach to this. Right. But I hope in the next season, if they do a next season, they're not just living on one planet. I, I hope they move around a little bit more. Okay, that's fair. Um, and and they need they need to explain Smith. Smith is going to come out again, and Smith either needs to die like soon or t- like I I'm not going to buy her manipulation. Yeah, maybe she gets her own robot, and they spend the show. She's chasing them. Who knows? I, I, I don't know. That, that that was my promise. I don't think I think though Smith was manipulative. And though Smith told a lot of lies and made people think things, she's not evil enough to carry the show as a main villain. No, she so, won't. But maybe she'll like disappear, and then they'll bring her back another season. Like they'll maybe that. Hopefully. You know what they need to do? They need the Walking Dead the shit out of it and kill her like in the first episode mm-hmm. and bring in a new villain, which they probably won't do. Or just not have villains. You can have. You can have. I don't care. Just let them do their thing. Um, 
Got it. it is very Fantastic Four, you though. No, ne- yeah. so so Netflix, uh, dude, they're really nailing the sci-fi. They they are balls deep in sci-fi. But like nailing it, like. Yeah. Uh, Alter Carbon. Something else that we got to talk about because Alter Carbon is one of the most expensive shows ever made. And it was great. Yeah, it was great. Like one of the best sci-fi TV shows I've ever seen. Not perfect, but great. Right. Um, Here's a question. Not a question, but a statement. It looked fantastic. What are we talking about? Uh, Lost in Space, this show. I mean, the majority of the show took place in like looked like Yellowstone. No, sure, but uh, the, the robot looked great. Robot looked, and it and it wasn't CG. No, right. I, I, I don't think it didn't look CG, did it? No, it did not. Yeah, and, but the robot was great, and and even then, like when they were fighting the when the when those dogs, alien dog things invaded the camp. Yes. And they got into a fight, and they were ripping them apart. Like that show, I know that a lot of it was in nature, but they made it look really great, and the planet actually felt alive. Like. Um, when they were filming all their scenes, like I felt like they, it was a planet that couldn't be Earth. Yeah, and uh, I think it looked great, and I think it speaks to like Netflix is putting a lot into the quality of their sci-fi, not just the stories, but how it looks. Well, they, the, the difference is if you look at one of these shows on Sci-Fi Channel, like Dark Matter, which is a great show, but it which got canceled, right? It, yeah, it did. Yeah. It looks cheesy. It, it looks it looks cheesy. Krypton doesn't though. No, okay, right, yeah. Krypton's I haven't good. seen it yet. Krypton's good, dude. But but you know what I mean for the yeah, yeah, for the yeah, most yeah. part, sci-fi shows are usually pretty cheesy looking. Yeah. Even shit like Quantum Leap and stuff, it's always been cheesy. Yeah. But Netflix is putting like major movie budgets into these shows. Yeah. And so I I think that's a big draw. Well, also too an, another plot hole that that hasn't been answered yet is do you remember the mom? What's the mom's name? I don't remember. Remember she sold information. To yeah, yeah. Will I? We yeah. don't know who she sold it to. Right. We don't know what's going on there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll address that. You know. And, and even if I don't, I doubt there'll be repercussions. I mean, they're they're in another galaxy by now, and maybe they'll find them. I don't know. Maybe who knows? Be human contact. Maybe. Maybe there will be some time shifting because they're traveling through wormholes to where they end up back sure. on the planet they were supposed to go to, and everyone's dead. Who knows? Mm. There's lots of there's lots of possibilities they could do. Um, but uh, check out Lost in Space on Netflix. You got anything else to say about it? No, I really I, I recommend it. I think watch Alter Carbon first if you haven't seen it. They're unrelated. And then Lost in Space, well, sci-fi is is definitely worth a watch. Yeah. You don't think you think so, right? It's worth a watch. If you're in the sci-fi, of course, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So if you're not in the sci-fi, I, I and, it's, and really, it's a great like I'm gonna say this from watching it with my son. It's a it's a show you could watch with your family, yeah. and it'll be engaging for and and I mean that's missing from TV where one show could be as engaging to me as it is to my son yeah. as it is to my father. Like we could all watch it and it and it speaks to all of us. So they're well done. It's like Back to the Future. Except I hate Back to the Future. So fuck off. Anyways, um, for, uh, uh, well, before I close out, uh, check, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash Corker Comics, or just search Corker Comics on youtube.com and subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Come visit us at one of our stores. We have a location in Pembroke Pines on Pines Boulevard just east of University Drive and another in Miami on 107th and 8th Street across from FIU for Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy After Dark. I am Stephen Corker. Well, Bon chicka bon bon chicka bon